All right, let's start this stream. Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to be playing Tainted Grail Conquest on Steam. I have been playing this game a lot recently, and I've been playing it with the Archer class, uh, particularly the Zealot. In fact, after uh, playing around with some of the other characters, this is the one that I stuck to with the most and uh, managed to pass the game. Currently I'm on difficulty level 18 and this video is to show you a little bit uh, some tips, strategies that go on um, along with the Zealot character. He is actually a pretty good strong character. He's able to one-shot most of his enemies and he basically focuses on increasing his armor and uh, his uh, damage percent. So I'm going to start off by just introducing uh, his basics. Um, so he, uh, and this is absolutely true, focus on shooting rarely. Uh, and what you want to do with those shots that you do very rarely is eliminate uh, or kill off the monster in one shot. You're basically wanting to one shot everybody. They have to focus on building up their barriers every single turn, which is why it is extremely important that their deck is thin enough so that you are seeing these faint cards particularly show up. Now these faint cards are gonna be the cornerstone of his strategy. On one side, they uh, help gain tain armor and then barrier equal to 100% of the current armor. The other side of this card is called Unbreakable Faint. So once you play the first side, it's shuffled into your discard and then when you draw it again, it will show up as the other side and then vice versa. On the other side, it will give you 150% of your current armor. So if you see, your armor is extremely important to build this up so that you are gaining barrier to block the incoming attacks from the enemies. The one thing that we need to mention is he, this character will die if he has no barrier. His barrier will reset to zero from turn to turn. Which means that every turn we need to be drawing these blue cards or maneuvers to get it back up. The only other card that is a maneuver that does not give you any um, barrier is the stepping stones slash charge one. This is a very good card. It's probably arguably one of the more important cards in your deck after the feints <clears throat> because it will help increase your percent damage from one turn to the next by discarding all the current arrows that you have. Now that is all right because as you know, we're not really gonna be playing those arrows. We're gonna be waiting until we hit our ultimate charge and then hitting the enemy or one-shotting the enemy with our ultimate charge arrow. That brings me to our ultimate. So our ultimate is essentially an arrow that you can select when to draw. At five to nine charges, it's gonna hit for one times the current damage. At 10 to 14, it's going to hit at two times, but really you don't want to use this ever at one or two. Very rarely you'll use it. If you can finish off an enemy and move on, then you'll use it. But really you're waiting for this one. The 15 charges is going to be four times effect. So if you're doing a four times effect, your damage is going to be so great. It's going to very easily one shot enemies. So that is where our deck it's important to cull. I already culled one of the cards uh, before starting this run. It was the bow. It's really bad. It doesn't do anything other than give you temporary boost and damage percentage and it's just clogging up your deck. So I just eliminated that card before starting this run. The other two cards you want to get rid of for this character are the arrow backs because you're not focusing on shooting arrows. You're focusing on cycling through these maneuvers and discarding your arrows to then draw your random elemental arrow at 15 charges and one-shotting everybody. 
that is the summary and I'll show you a little bit of how that works. This character is extremely weak in the beginning so um, it is not uncommon to die maybe um, the first couple of uh, enemies you, f you face but really if you're uh, trying to maximize your uh, run by or, or success by these two uh, rune stones from the blacksmith the crack stand which is going to decrease the enemy armor by 10 and the cracked ethel which is going to increase your armor by 10. like i said armor is super important you want to increase to 75 as quickly as possible once you hit that it's smooth sailing um with a couple of caveats which i'll talk about focusing on the passive skills so let's go in for a run start with the weaker enemies carry weird candle as high as we can uh another side note is i have been um playing this quite a bit this is difficulty level 18. so these characters these enemies are going to have 50 armor minus 10 because of the crack stand pretty large amount of hit points and damage in general so they're very strong um and that is why you know grinding this game i've had to uh work really hard on unlocking some of the permanent upgrades that you get from the other village um, characters so uh, maybe i'll talk about that later but i just wanted to give you a general gist of the strategy that we're going to be using here so let's get it this is one of the more stronger um, earlier on enemies because these guys will increase the amount of damage they uh, deliver unless they're stunned then they reset which is totally doable because we have the smoke shot. So we start out every single turn by playing our maneuvers or our blue cards, which give us, in this case, temporary armor. So we have a base armor of 20 uh, temporarily. It's, it's, it's 10 because of the ethyl and another 10 because of the faint card that I just played. Um, sorry, uh, right there. Um, and um, increased by 10 for one turn. So we have a base of 45. And uh, what the maneuver card does too is it's going to increase 25% our damage uh, that we deliver. Now one thing to keep in mind is not only your barrier reset from turn to turn as you will see but your damage percent will uh, return to zero not from turn to turn but whenever you hit an arrow. So you want to increase this as much as possible from one turn to the next it will stay unless you hit an arrow. So you want to make sure the arrow you're shooting is generally an arrow that's going to deliver a lot of damage for instance the elemental arrow so here we go you'll see this go up again our armor went up to 65 our damage percent went to 175 barrier is 120 he's not really going to touch us so we're just going to x out here uh, our turn and now you see our barrier is completely gone our armor reset to base of 45 damage percent is 200 uh, percent which is carried over from the previous turn so as usual, this guy's now going to do 6 times uh, 6 to 8, so uh, I always count for it to deliver the maximum. So let's see. We're already protected from it, so we're just going to keep playing these blue cards because even if we have enough barrier, it's going to increase our base uh, percentage damage. Sorry, not our base, but our uh, percentage damage. And then this is the one I was telling you about. It's going to give me an additional 60% for the next arrow I hit by discarding the rest of the arrows I have. So this one, that one and um, technically that one or uh, yeah that one uh, and this one is essentially nothing that I want to worry about right now so there we go we're up to 310 percent almost to our full uh, full charge probably now we are gonna be able to play it so I'm gonna first try to protect myself just in case I don't kill him but I have a feeling this is gonna be sufficient uh, or not he has 40 armor like i said we want to decrease this whenever we get the chance so we will just shoot it anyways uh decrease his damage and just try to kill him from here normally you don't have to do this but this is just the beginning when we're still weak hopefully now we're gonna see some of the passives show up that i want uh to discuss with you that if we find these from the beginning we're gonna be in good shape now Normally you would pick up arrows here, but I am going to wait because I don't want to clog up too many arrows and not see enough of these show up, which could be a mistake early on. Maybe four or five cards you're picking for the entire run. So your card shreds are going to go up really quickly and it's not a tragedy if you don't even get those. So now we didn't get the two passives that I was looking for. One of them is Caltrops, which 
With every discarded arrow, you are reducing the enemy's armor significantly for three turns, I believe. And quick aim. Quick aim is any leftover barrier at the end of the turn is going to be uh, two percent of that is going to be added to your um, uh, next hit. So you're increasing your per damage percent uh, exponentially. So those two are extremely powerful. Your runs are going to go smooth sailing after you hit one of those. But in this situation, we got three. These two I'm not really excited about at all. Increasing your armor, like I said, is key. So now we have a base of 55. I'm going to increase my damage a little bit here. But we got quite a bit more powerful with uh, that one. Padded armor passive skill is, is one of the good ones too. But I, the other two I spoke about earlier are really, really good. So let's try to get to level 5 and see if we can find it. As I said, we play our maneuvers to get our armor, uh, not our armor, This in this case, this one is going to give us barrier, so we're up to 164, super safe against this guy. But more than that, we're also getting damage percentage to 175, as you can see there. I'm going to pass, allow him to strike me, build up my damage percentage as much as I can. This is enough to protect myself from him, so now I can charge and get 150% damage get closer to that elemental arrow and this is really what you're doing is you're just basically protecting yourself so that when you draw the elemental arrow I always start by protecting myself just in case there have been times I make mistakes and I do not get the bearer and then I die but you get this elemental arrow and well we're not quite there yet at eliminating him in one shot but you get the gist this this uh, two three shots that I'm doing later it's just because I don't want to deal with waiting another whole round and um, then doing the elemental I could do that but I just rather get it over with so but maybe here we have an opportunity to see uh, how this might look like so I am going to light up a weird candle get myself strong enough and try to hit this guy uh by the way all damage dealt will s automatically redirect to this mule guy here so we need to prevent that by stunning him so that we can either kill this guy or kill that guy i'll try to focus on this guy first the reason i don't want to kill the mule first is that his armor is super high and it only goes down after you eliminate all the neighboring guys so we are safe from damage so it's okay to just do that I don't need 200% damage. I'll take the 50 armor for next turn. And that's that's. this is now where I have to defend myself until I draw a smoke arrow that will stun the middle dude. Because I already have my ultimate charged. There it is. And now I'm going to stun him so that I can eliminate or one-shot him. Get some protection always and charge up again. So now you see I killed somebody. I'm already at 250% damage with 75 barrier. Very, very powerful combination. Unfortunately, I drew the smoke shot here again, which um, is not useful to me because I'm not going to hit anybody with 7 charges out of 15. I'm at 12 now. But I did not draw the smoke. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase my barriers that I'm going to discard and increase my damage percentage there we go damage percentage is super high uh, I'm not gonna try to kill him because he's 75 but what I'm gonna try to do is draw a smoke I did not draw the smoke shot that is very unfortunate I could arguably do that and uh, really it was not the right call but we can now finally take out that guy and maybe take out no we cannot take out that guy so we will focus on building up our armor again and our barrier again get some defense charge up a little bit he's already weaker because now the next turn he's gonna lose a lot of armor he's down to 60 so we essentially now get to kill the other little guy one shot him and now we can one shot that guy in two turns after we get enough damage percentage going 
and his uh, increase by 50 armor is going to be done by the next turn. So he is going to come down significantly, as you will see. It's down to 40 right now. I'm at 500% damage. Listen, I for one turn I kill this guy, the next time I'm at 500% damage and I'm going to kill him. That's how we go. No cards that we talked about have shown up. Crackstan is always better than this one, so now they're down 10 and 10, 20 armor when I face them. Very, very good. Now we are going to try to call our other two cards we don't want. Elderly Archer, I really love him. He is super helpful because now my deck is as follows. Six arrows and five maneuvers. Every single draw, I am going to see barrier now. Almost, I mean, it's impossible to draw only this. It's, 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 it will be very, very, very unlikely. So let us face this pack of enemies. They're pretty weak. I normally leave the uh, treasure guy. He's pretty strong in the later uh, difficulty levels. So I'll leave him till the very end. So like you see, I'm building up my armor and my barrier discarding all of the arrows to get my damage percentage up same strategy try to focus on this guy because he's going to debuff me he already did by 60 armor that is a lot that is going to be very annoying to deal with because um, i'm going to basically get hit here um, unless i take out somebody before so let's see i can basically kill him or not him so i'm going to kill him or maybe not. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create... Uh, 27 is enough to defend against this. So not ideal. But as, he, as I told you, this guy is pretty generally weak at the beginning. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take him out now. I'm going to I'm gonna stun him. I don't want him to summon an ally. And I'm just going to start building up my damage percentage again ride this turn out he's already gonna cause some damage uh, but I'm just gonna block it I'm gonna use my flute to block it and I got um, 22 anyways just because I have that other passive that gives me a couple of points of barrier for every discarded arrow but now my my numbers are back to normal I am just going to get my elemental arrow so I'm protecting myself, charging up to 580%, which can become 605, and he's gone. One more uh, combat, and maybe, hopefully, we'll see some... Okay, crack stand, merge. So now they are down 17. Um, that is really good. I am going to maybe draw an extra card and reduce the cost by one. And uh, try to get more cracked stands. Those are pretty good. Oh. And let's do the double the duration of all weird repelling items. I think that's better. I'm not going to do the treasure guy until later. This is annoying to deal with, but we got to do it. And I'm trying to demonstrate this is just the same tactic. You first protect yourself protect myself again and now I have enough protection instead of protecting myself even more I, can, I still get the 25% bonus by playing this maneuver though both maneuver cards but this one gives me an additional 100% because I'm discarding all of those arrows and I'm getting a little bit of barrier with it oh, well I could still play this too never mind so now I, I am looking to smoke shot the guy but maybe I don't have to maybe I can uh, just discard all the arrows here it will be a little bit annoying because I'm going to be short by one charge it is okay because I will get to kill somebody here so not him maybe him or him let's take him out for now let's get our barriers and our things going smoke shot was drawn this turn 
so it won't come up. So let's get our barrier and our armor up. Get our percent charge up. I'm at 12 or 15. If I draw smoke, I can basically stun him to attack him. Get my damage percentage up. One shot this guy. And now he is going to be very weak after the stun uh, effect. It's 50 for one turn and then it's going to come down uh, to like 30 something. Which in two turns here I am going to have enough damage percentage and an elemental arrow to shoot at him and take him out. Maybe one more turn. Here we go. Now we are at 50. So faint, charge, look at that 580%. And we're not worried about anything else. His armor is down 67. I did not one shot him. His armor was still pretty respectable. So I am just going to take him out with these shots. Again, this will not happen later in, in the run. It's just for now because he's a little bit weaker at the beginning. Well, and as you see, I took zero damage, only to barrier. Let us see if we can find. Oh, perfect. We got the flask. This is very very good it decreases the armor by 100 for five turns i have upgraded it but it's good even at its base before you upgrade it none of these cards but let us see each discarded arrow gives me one ar armor for three turns that's okay killing an enemy grants you three ultimate charges i like that but this one is probably even better every discarded card grants you one additional ultimate charge which is way better than this already and it also gives me 10 percent damage per arrow so I'm going to take this one. None of the ones that I was looking for uh, have showed up yet, which is the cracked the um, not the crack, sorry, I'm not talking about the rune sims, I'm talking about uh, passives, which are caltrops and quick aim have not shown up yet. So, so now we're even stronger. We got this rune stone that gives us some more armor. And we're going to go into this um, battle here and uh, just do the same thing, you know, Let's protect ourselves. So we have 187 because our armor is so strong. Now it's 40 and 25 until the end of combat. I mean, we're at 65 already. There is very little that they can do to... So now I'm at 380% too, by the way. That's 400% damage. 425% damage. So if I draw a smoke shot, I will be able to essentially uh, take out probably this guy right here because he has a uh, debuffing potential. And that is exactly what I'm going to stun this uh, enemy. I'm going to take this enemy out, protect myself just in case, let's have it, and just build up again. He's got 33 armor, that's respectable. He's now 53, which is even more respectable. Um, just build up armor and uh, barrier. Sorry, I get those two confused, but it's both of them kind of go synergistically together. Th at 395, I won't take him out with 75 armor. I'm gonna have to be more patient and try to deal with him first. And I'm gonna do that by increasing my percentage before I even use the arrow and get the smoke shot to stop him from soaking up the damage and now I get to increase my damage percentage by 75% playing those three maneuvers at 890 I'm hoping to take him out and he just he just barely survived that is very annoying because now I have to do that all over again and his uh, armor went up again. But I can't take him until I stun him. So it's just going to be a little bit more of a grind. But there it is. Um, I could just arguably do that. And now just sit tight. His armor is going to come down uh, after one turn. So I'm just going to wait it out and gain some more damage percentage. And now is the time to strike 
with 33 armor he has and 705% damage I got. I almost took him out, but his damage, I mean his armor is, is so low, he's gonna not survive this turn. But, you see the general gist now. I don't need healing, I don't know what else they offer again, nothing that I care about. So we are going to take on this group here. He, he's not that strong, so I won't burn a life, a fire, a uh, wired candle. And we start by building up our barrier as usual. You'll never go wrong if you do that. Discard the rest of your cards to gain full charge. He essentially gave us this disturbance card, which kind of clogs our deck but that is okay for now because we are probably strong enough to or maybe not now we have to I should have waited it out a little bit more but I will try to do as much damage as I can until the time comes to take him out so that is sufficient now I'm charging much faster because of that passive I picked up in the last uh, turn. I took him out. That's nice. And I am going to be ready to take him out next. Let's get rid of that one. We're at 350% and we are good to go. So yeah, most of the times you're one-shotting folks. Uh, some other times you're not. You're just um, two-shotting them. And the first turn of combat, draw two additional cards before cards reduced by one. It won't stay there long if I get another Welcome. cracked stan. Maybe I can increase my armor to 75. That would be pretty good. Let's do that. Now we are at base ma at max. We are very strong already. I don't see how we are going to have any issues um, in, the, in the next couple of level ups if we are able to get... You see, look at 262 already, just because that's base 75. This is just immense. We're at 300. And we're at... S oh my goodness. This is just... Look at that. One shot. It's going to be smooth sailing from here now. Especially if we get Caltrops or Quick Aim. If we get those two, I should phrase it. If we get those two, it'll be smooth sailing. Now, there is one other passive that goes really well with charging up really quickly, which is the one that... Uh, buffs are elemental to having piercing effects one shot um, very quickly now um, but we have to wait for that one to show up as well hopefully in the next level we'll see one of those three three passives we are actively searching for as you see I'm playing faster now but you get the gist of it you build up your Barrier and your armor with those blue maneuver cards. Uh, synergistically, you're increasing these guys, and then you're always, always, always playing that other card, the charge or uh, arrow one that uh, discards all the arrows and gives you a lot of damage percentage. And then you just one-shot everybody. But he has got, unfortunately, 75 armor, so I am not going to one-shot him. Uh, he buffed himself quite a bit, so I have to grind this one out a little bit but it's okay i'm gonna get another so this is the other one the, the charge and stepping stone sorry these are the ones that give me a lot of buff but this is good because it's gonna decrease his armor a little bit it's gonna help me and now my damage percentage is up to 500 almost which i am going to use to knock him out and now we are at level six we need to wait one more level okay this is the one maneuver you want quick dodge Somersault and Advanced Faint are the three blue cards you want to pick up. This is going to be really good to keep our um, defense levels up while we face some of these other bad guys. So I will be pausing here shortly just to... Uh, I'll pick this up later. Um, but... 
just to see, look at this, I mean, I have two energy left still, and this had 230%, 337, I could get more barrier, I don't need it, I need more damage percent. And I'm already at a level of getting an elemental fire, and I can choose whoever I want to knock out. So let's take out that one. And now this became significantly easier. Dodge and faint. Too much power. Now, if you're wondering, why are they only doing such little damage? That's because of this, my friend. Armor of 75. If I have this armor, or any character has this armor, they do very little damage. Any enemy that decreases your armor, those are the ones. Th that is your uh, Achilles tendon. You don't want to face those guys. Those guys are the ones that are going to take you out. I probably played this the wrong order. But I'm at 385 now. I think I can take him out like that. And we will now have a chance to uh, build up a little bit this one turn and now take him out the next. Because I have 490 or 500 and that is plenty. Um, maybe I try to show you next level up if there if it comes now this is the other one that you want to take so this one gives uh, less uh, 17 armor less for all enemies but this one is every turn reduce the armor of all enemies by five so we're basically synergizing both rune stones to work really well together and make our enemies much weaker so that we can really why is this hanging tree not working I'm pretty sure I did not trigger oh there it is so I got uh, something pretty useless. Um, these enemies are weak, so I won't use a weird candle. Um, but let us see. 75. He's going to debuff me, my armor. This is what I'm talking about. I need to get to a point where I can take them out quickly. It won't happen until next turn. I basically lost 60 armor for 3 turns. That is a lot. That is quite a lot, but maybe I can take one of them out. So not him, maybe him, probably you. And I'll build up again. Fortunately, these two don't do too much damage. I am just having to find a creative way to take out everybody else. Cause he's got 75 armor for a couple turns. Um, Ah, uh, he did it again. So now he's see now he's hitting me 36 to 50 because I'm at minus 45. This is where things can get a little dicey, but I'm gonna stun him. Just build up my damage percentage a little bit more. My armor is up a little bit. He's he's gonna heal, which buys me some time to build up my damage percentage some more. He's not gonna hit me, so I'm just gonna let him. But he's gonna debuff me now. Next turn. So maybe I pause him again. Let's pause him. And now our armor is going to go up a lot. And we'll be safe. There it is. 75 armor right again. And he is not in a, any spot to do any significant damage. His armor is down now. And this is when we take him out. Opportunity. Hold on one second. Figure something out. Okay. So, as you see, he gets stronger as the game goes on, like every other character, but his is kind of exponential. Get a random stat boost, because I don't like to re max. Oof, that is really bad. I will have an off word candle, so let's see what we got. We got armor. Okay, so in the armor department, we are done. We don't want any more armor. I think we focus on some other things now. Weird Candle is burning less, but these are probably arguably one of the weaker um, enemies, so I will just keep it going for now. I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but that's because I just got a lot stronger. So, play blue cards first. 150, only to 6 damage. I focus on charging, so I get boost. I'm at 435% damage now. Discard those cards. I have my ultimate maxed out. Um, I am going to use it to take out one of these guys. 
And then I'm going to protect myself. And there we go. Can't remember when I lost the 10. Oh yeah, the 10 health was from the uh, encounter where I increased my base armor, which is now 60 and 25. It's 85. So even if they debuff me by 10, I'll still be at 75. Now that is going good. And now I do the stepping stones. And look at that. I'm at 455% by the next turn. I have the elemental arrow available because of that passive skill I picked up. Just to review, this one uh, allows me to get an extra ultimate charge for every discarded card. So basically it's times two. Each card I discard is two. Um, so after discarding eight cards, I'm back up to max. And then I also get 10% buff. This one allows me to get 25% increase for the first hit. So after, well, I don't think this one is that great, but whatever. This one is also not very great. Discarding every uh, arrow and spirit arrow gives me five barrier. And then uh, those are the two ones that you start, which is what I explained at the beginning. So now I can basically take out um, one of them. I allow him to take out his enemies, uh, the other enemies, because he will hit everybody. And I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to sit tight, build up my uh, uh, barrier, and then one shot him once he's taking care of everybody else for me. So I'm safe. Next turn, he, he I basically charge up and I take him out because I have my elemental ready. Boom. And now I'm level 7. Now let's see if we get Caltrops or Quick Aim. If we do, that would be fantastic. I can show that to you as well. Uh, none of these. Okay. We did not get it. That is a shame. This passive goes really well with our ability to charge really quickly because at the start of each turn with ultimate gain, which will be many turns uh, when we charge up after we discard our cards and end our turn, we get a bonus 100% damage. It's really strong. This one I do not like or care for because 12 hits, very rarely we're going to get to 12 hits. We basically, as you see, one shot everybody. This one, uh, every turn you deal more than 300 H uh, damage, you get 30 HP is just okay. So just this, this one is much better. Okay, so we merge those guys, and this one is going to stun somebody every five turns. If I take out this, I'm still at 75 uh, armor, and I get to stun everybody every five turns. Somebody every five turns, so probably better. And uh, now we see if the fortune seller has anything for us that can reduce. Okay, this is good because it cycles through our deck. Discard all cards in hand and draw four cards, but the biggest boost from the upgrades I get um, with this one is the cost is reduced by one. So I get free armor, free um, um, barrier by playing that one. So now I think we're strong enough to face the people over at the treasure area and then the, of course, um, I should have gone that way. Uh, the legendary encounter which maybe i will be able to showcase for you i am going to pick up that milestone anyways just because i am going to make my way all the, all the way there and use one candle for both probably both both of them i think that is oh that is not the golem so that guy is generally easier than the golem but i don't want to jinx myself either so this is one candle for both of them Okay, this guy is pretty strong. You have to take him out before he buffs himself too much. He buffs himself a lot. So, amazing. We remove this is actually very lucky. They get minus 50 armor until the end of combat, all of them. I am going to play this card and I am going to essentially charge up and I'm already I already have my elemental arrow by the way. He he got himself pretty healed up, but his armor is very very low so what i have to do here i might not be able to one shot him here but if i draw an elemental that decreases the armor further he is not buffing so maybe i wait it out let's see he is not buffing again so we might be in business here so let us see at a thousand percent damage with an elemental arrow. Do we take him out with minus 12 armor? We don't. We don't. His damage has decreased significantly. 
I don't think they can get us. But if he buffs himself, because now he got he got yeah he he's gonna buff himself. So this is gonna be bad. We have to we have to uh, stun him because anytime he buffs, we lose. Essentially, he gets a lot of armor by buffing, so we don't want to allow that. And we reduce his armor a little bit more. He's a pretty strong guy. I would not be opposed to uh, attempting... Okay, I don't normally do this, but I'm just going to use this on him. Just because I want to get to the boss real quick. So he's at minus 90 cent. I will take him out now. And I had to use... Uh, um, normally I will grind it out a little bit more, but I want to get to the boss quicker and... Um, what was show you show you just because I have some other stuff to do today but we want to unlock uh, armor slot for runestones if we can um, get this one back on board and now we will fight the big guy here Eh, whatever I'll just use it again Whenever I kill a big boss, I get uh, four more weird candles, so I will just use it. So to kill this guy, you need to uh, essentially stun this one, because he, he absorbs all the damage, similar to the mule. So I basically build up my barrier, build up my damage that I can deal, um, and try to stun this guy so that I can take him out. And that will look like something like this. So this is going to be enough to save myself. And um, hopefully he does not get more barrier. Okay, so smoke shot him. Defend myself. I'm at a thousand percent damage. I should be able to take him out. I don't because he has three armor. But he's down to 97, minus 97. So what this will look like is I have to stun him again. Um, And this will happen sometimes where you can't take him out, but you basically buff yourself up and you try to stun this guy on the left. 10 barrier is nothing. He's got minus 102 uh, armor and it's for two more turns too. So I am now in a spot where I can take him out. I'm at 580% damage, but he's got so much armor lost that he's out. So there it is. Um, None of these are good. We did not level up. We will get the special passive that the boss can give you. Um, we'll take it. Um, if you play two or less cards, gain 100% damage. Every 10th card in one combat increases your damage by 10% or draw two more cards in the first turn of combat. Do not like any of these. But if anything is going to synergize with my damage, I am going to take it for now. Well, this is going to be a pause. I will be back um, later today. Maybe do another video and record this and probably upload it somewhere. YouTube. Uh, just so you can focus on seeing how this guy evolves. He's pretty strong, but let's go here and maybe get another uh, passive. Oh, it's 800. I'm, I'm just short by a little bit, but that's okay. Maybe I can unlock another ability so I don't want to do max HP I'm not interested in doing the weird stone and uh, I think we are good here all right guys that was a good uh, first run it only gets stronger from here on and easier uh, until you defeat the guy I have not beat beaten uh, level 18 yet uh, but hopefully this run will be the the one and I will come back later and show you take care <laughs>